Hey everyone, uh, my name is Dust Fingers, and I'm going to be doing a series on how I prepare for and run my online D&D games. And the first part of the series is going to be about note taking, world building, and information around characters. So first off, what I have in front of me is a tool called Obsidian Notes. Obsidian Notes is a note taking tool that is available for free online. You can find it at obsidian.md, you can get it for Windows. It is also available for Mac, Linux, a few different uh, distributions of Linux, and on the App Store as well as Google Play. Now, before we get started talking about the features of Obsidian Notes and really how it enables, in my opinion, really great world building and a really great flow, the first thing to talk about is how things get synced up. Now, Obsidian Notes creates a folder where it saves all of the information that you have taken down in it. You could put this just locally on your desktop, but if you're like me and you use notes kind of across uh, various laptops, different computers, on your iPhone, then you're gonna wanna store it somewhere centrally. In that case, you're going to want to first download Obsidian Notes for iPhone, make a vault, put it into iCloud Drive, and then download iCloud Drive for Windows or Mac, um, and make sure that you open up the vault from there. So in this case, you can see when I check out my vaults, uh, open folder as vault, not this one. Um, you can oh right here yes uh, you can see the Gemheart campaign is saved under my username under our iCloud Drive. This means that it automatically syncs up whenever I'm using it. It's really great for when you have an idea on the go. I'm definitely someone who tends to get ideas on long car rides or a daily commute, and it's sometimes I just want to note them down before I forget. So. Now to dive a bit into Obsidian itself. Um, Obsidian is effectively a series of markdown files. For those of you who do not know what markdown is, it is a rich text editing language. Um, this means that instead of just normal text, such as you could write, you know, hi, I'm Dust Fingers, you can add, edit, you can add modifiers around that text, such as two uh, apostrophes on either side to make it bold. And if we jump out of source mode, I'll go into this a bit later. If we jump into reading, we can see that it's been bolded. Now, the reason that you have uh, features like this is because Markdown can be used almost anywhere. You can use it across a whole bunch of text editors. It's not locked into Microsoft Word or Pages. It is widely recognized across the internet and across most programs. Now, before we get into exactly how to do Markdown, we should check out this little bar down here, Source Mode Reading and Live Preview. Source Mode is what I do most of my editing in. This means that exactly what I am typing is what I'm going to see. In this case, if I type two, uh, if I have two asterisks on either side of this text, then I will see two asterisks on either side. If I jump into live preview, you're going to see that it's actually going to give me a preview of what I'm seeing. But if I click into it, it'll still show those asterisks. If I jump into reading and I click on it, then I'm just reading this. I can no longer edit, and it's just what is displayed. Some people prefer live preview, but a lot of times I make errors in my markdown, and it helps to be able to see them right away. This, uh, this pound symbol that you see up here is denotes that this is a header. Headers go down a few different levels. This is header two, header three, header four, five, and I, okay, so five is as far as it goes on Obsidian, and I believe that's as far as is recognized in most Markdown. And you can just see here that headers get a little bit smaller with each go. Whoops. And you can see even in preview mode, we do get some of that automatic live preview. It's just not as extensive as live preview mode. And if we jump into reading again, we can see that things under headers, under the closest ancestor, automatically become sectioned off. So this would be really useful if you were making a bunch of different notes and maybe this is specifically description and this is uh, a character background. When we go into our reading mode now, each of these can be collapsed. And you can see these actually collapse under each other because they're different headers. Uh, headers contain subheaders. So if you have header two under header one, then when you collapse header one, all of them get collapsed. If they're the same type of header, and I will show that real quick. Then when we go into reading mode, you can see that it does not auto collapse the one under it. It respects the hierarchy. All right, so again, that's Markdown. You can look up Markdown cheat sheets. I will show that briefly here. This is a Markdown guide, actually, um, 
Obsidian seems to be under it, which is kind of cool. And probably the best way is actually just the cheat sheet. You can find these all over images uh, on Google. Use whichever one you want. Print it out for reference. Reference it in the sides here. Um, I'm trying to find a better one. Here's a, a decent one. And um, I'll put a link to this in the YouTube chat as, or in the YouTube description. You can find lots of references for this online. So back to Obsidian. So now we know what Markdown is and how we're going to use it. Now a little bit more into the power of Obsidian. Obsidian not just allows, does not just allow you to take notes, it allows you to link them. So let's say, and let's make a new note, and say, I wanted to make a new character named, um, let's name him Noman. This was a uh, fa uh, favorite NPC from a previous D&D campaign. So Noman is the character's name, and I just want that as the first header. Then maybe I'll have a character description here. I'll have a second level that is a character interactions with the party. And maybe I'll have character secrets, things that the party could find out. Now, here, let's say that the character description had a relationship with someone. So in this case, we're going to use an asterisk that denotes um, a list item in Markdown. And we could say Nomen has a relationship with Solve. Now, in this case, who Solve is, I could make another note right away and write who down who they are or I could double click on this word put two brackets around it and then control click on this and that's automatically made a note for me so here we now have the solve note again the nomen note and now if I control click this it links me back to the solve note and if I go again and I put in two brackets I can actually now relink to that existing page there we go this is really useful because a lot of times as you're thinking through character building or world building, you come up with a name or a relationship you want, and you're not ready to flesh it out just yet, but you want to have a record of it. So this is where that enables that type of flow. At least for me, it really helps my, my mental model of how world building works. Okay, so that is Obsidian in linking. Next up, we have tagging. So Obsidian enables you to add tags onto your documents. These are denoted by putting three dashes above and below the section. It accepts tags, it accepts, and it accepts aliases. It also accepts CSS classes, but that's a little bit beyond the scope of this video, and I might dive into it at another time. Tags are just other ways that you can find this page. So if I wanted to say that Nomen was an NPC, it uh, maybe Nomen is an orc, and he is chaotic. Did I spell it? Chaotic, yep. Uh, neutral. I always prefer underscores uh, as opposed to spaces. I don't know if Obsidian inherently supports spaces in their tags, but just from a habit and you'll make your life easier if things are one word connected by dashes or underscores. So then once we have all this, I can go into this search feature and I can actually look for the tag chaotic neutral. And we see that Nomen comes up. We could also look for chaotic NPC or just look for NPC, NPC and orc. We're seeing that here. Uh, this is a really powerful feature, tagging all your documents and being able to look them up again is great, not just in D&D world building, but in any type of uh, document vault system. So let's open this up again. Aliases are another thing that this page could be referenced as. So maybe I don't just want this page to be called Nomen. I want to also be able to call it favored NPC. So now let's jump back into our Explorer, go down to salve, and we're gonna say that salve has favored NPC. You can see that by looking that up in the link, it's automatically linked those two and their alias. Again, really, really useful to have. And of course, double clicking on that allows it. I'm control clicking to get to these links because we're in source mode. But again, if we jump to live preview mode, we can just click on these Actually, you have to be in reading mode to do that. Favorite NPC. You can see these metadata that now shows up because we have jumped into reading mode. Jump to salve. Jump to favorite NPC nomen. And there you go. Let's jump back into source mode. So you can already see how powerful this is enabling us to world build. Um, I'm going to now talk a little bit about the graph view. Graph view is, uh, in my opinion, exceptionally powerful for just getting oriented 
as to a faction or a character and seeing where they're linked in. So in this case, let's say I look up, um, I'm going to use an example from my current campaign because that way I have some pre-existing links. I'm going to look up the Brazen Beak Barracks. You can see that these were mentioned in session one. And also in session one, there was a mention of something called Shrax. Uh, this was just a play on the word shark. It's not that interesting. Um, but let's maybe find a better example of that. So let's say we look for Shroud. Uh, Shroud is a faction in this world. And you can see they've been mentioned in session zero, session one. They have a link into this NPC. And we can jump down and see that they're associated with the Shrouds up here. Uh, I'm sorry, not up there. If we take a quick look down here, they're in debt to a member of the Shrouds. And we can jump back again and see all of this stuff. Again, just really useful to be able to jump back and forth. Um, another nice piece is what's called the backlinks uh, panel. And here, if we go into, let's check the shrouds again, because they have a decent amount of links. You can see where they've been mentioned. So not just in that graph view, but simply in this side panel. I can see in session zero, we mentioned them as a faction. Um, I can see in session one that there's been an uptake, uptick in their activity around uh, trading around caravans that do trade textiles, and around this NPC, Sandana. Again, really nice to be able to just hit those two links and jump to anything. And I can even kind of search by folder. So if I want to link in a character and I typed in characters, it's going to show me everyone under that character folder right here. I'm gonna get rid of that. Now, the last thing I'm gonna note on Obsidian, and there is a lot more to cover on this, but I wanna keep this video kind of short as a introduction to the tool is the ability to have templates. I think this is my by far favorite feature. Um, and I know other text editors have something like this. I believe OneNote does as well. I moved over from OneNote because I didn't find it as intuitive. To enable templates, you need to do two things. You need to make a templates folder. In this case, I just call it templates, nice and easy. Then you're gonna go to settings, core plugins. And if you search up here, templates, you can go ahead and enable templates. It will give you an option of where to put them and some other stuff about date formats. But again, we can worry about this later. Templates is the important part. And if you type in a name that already exists, you'll get this nice drop down. That's how you know templates will be there. So let's say that I wanted to create a new, mm, a new session. So we're going to say, I've already had two sessions in my game. Let's make it a third session. So session three, I guess session two, because I call my first session session zero. Go into that in a later video if anyone's interested as to what makes up, a, in my opinion, a good session zero and sets up a safe playing space for all your players. But let's say I want to make a session. Now, there's a whole bunch of things I care about in a session. Descriptions, locations, important NPCs, clues that people might find. A lot of this is uh, inspired by the Lazy DM's prep guide. You can look up uh, the markdown file that's used and use it as well in your templates. And you can actually look up both The Lazy Dungeon Master and Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master, two phenomenal books on how to prepare. It doesn't actually make you lazy. It is just efficient ways of preparing for sessions that often go off the rails or in a sandbox environment. You don't want to over-prepare for things that might not come up. So again, here we are at session two. And I want to add in a template for sessions. So I'm going to go into my templates folder, and I've already created this for sake of brevity. We can see our Lazy DM prep. In the Lazy DM prep, we have all the things that we want to see. I'll jump into source mode here. We have characters, a recap, the strong start description, scenes, secrets and clues, locations, important NPCs, monsters, and treasure, as well as some metadata up here. Again, only tags and aliases are actually searchable uh, directly by, that, by the tags and aliases. However, you can add in more fields here. This is what's called YAML. I can talk about that later. And there are plugins by the community that will allow you to search these easier. But just for the sake of this discussion, we're going to be focusing on the template itself. So I've got all the things in here I need. And now when I jump into that session two, I'm going to go ahead and click insert template. I believe there is a uh, key keyboard shortcut for that, but I'm still relatively new to this tool and learning the shortcuts. And I'm going to click on lazy DM prep. And just like that, I've got everything dropped into here. And now we're ready to get preparing. We can just fill this in. We don't have to add all this boilerplate work. One last feature I'll mention before closing this uh, video out is that in the templates, you can add this, these bracket statements. In this case, bracket, bracket, title, bracket, bracket. This is basically a special statement that says, put the title of the document right here. This is really useful for NPCs. 
So if I wanted to make a new NPC instead of session two, let's say we're going to make Nomen two as an NPC. Um, you'll again, you can't name a file some it's already been named. It will remind you. So Nomen two. And now we're going to go ahead again and click on our insert template, click on the NPC description. And you can see Nomen two was auto filled there because in NPC description, it has title. It's not a huge time saver, but it's quick enough and it's easy enough to add in and, you know, adds a little bit less typing you'll be doing. And when you're doing D and D prep in a homebrew world, every line you don't have to type is a win. So that's all for this video. That's been obsidian. If you like the video on the contents, please leave a like, follow the channel. Um, I also stream on Twitch under dustfinger00. I really appreciate everyone watching this and I hope you all have a great day. Bye.